We made a complete game in just 4 days for the GMTK 2025 Game Jam. In this video, I will show you how I made this precise, Celeste-like platformer from scratch using the Godot game engine. Hi, my name is Pixelipi and I have a long life dream of making games for a living. Since I've been away from game development for a while, I decided to join the DMTK 2025 Game Jam, a programming marathon with only 96 hours to make a game. The theme for this jam was Loop, and I teamed up with a composer and a pixel artist, and we made a pretty good team. As soon as the team was announced, we hopped into a call and started discussing possible ideas for the game. We had tons of ideas, but decided to take some inspiration from another game instead. Celeste has those really cool rhythm-based level sections where the player has to time its jump to a certain rhythm that loops around indefinitely. We decided to take this mechanic and make a game about music, as you see. Upon opening Godot, the very first thing I did was to work on the core game mechanics. I started by making some tiles for the player to walk in, using some placeholder art. Then I immediately started working on the player. Our player is composed of a few elements. He's a character body with a skin and collision, but I also used a special node of mine for a state machine. State machines are a way to structure and manage different behaviors for game objects, like characters. It is responsible for managing the transitions between states based on events. I made this system based on this article by ggquest, there is a link to it down in the description. And the result is this very cool ball of green that can move around and jump. I decided to work on the blocks next. The blocks are components that can have different sizes and collisions. They can also be activated and deactivated based on their color. For the block activation and deactivation system, I made a Beat Manager class. It receives an array of block types and loops through them indefinitely. When it reaches a certain color, it activates this color and deactivates all others. And this mechanic marks the end of the first day. Pretty good progress. It was very early in the morning of the second day. The prototype was ready, and to close the gameplay loop, I needed a win and a lose condition. It was time to make the individual levels the player will have to go through. I made a simple script that would handle that for me. This script starts the levels, activates the traps and also spawns the player in the right places. By the end, I had a system that could spawn and respawn the player in the death condition. A few hours later, I received some of our first ideas for the art. We have a standing frog, a bowtie frog, and a hat frog. Back to Godot, I figured our game still lacked content, so I made a simple pickup system. With this, I made a coin pickup and also a double jump pickup. Since I wanted to challenge players, I took some time to add a dash ability to add more depth to the player movement. To make it work, I added a new state to the state machine. It worked perfectly first time. I also took some time to finally add the player sprites. I finished that with some improved animations and particles here and there. And that's how it looked by the end of the second day. A lot more polished, but still a lot to do.
I decided to start the third day by preparing to make new levels. In the current state, the game could only have one screen at a time. It was fine for the jam, but I wanted some cool transitions between parts of the stage. So, I made a small system that would limit the player camera on the boundaries of each stage and transition between those boundaries. The levels are enclosed on those red boxes and when the player touches an area it transitions to the next part of the level. With this, I could freely design the levels in the game. I also took some time to add some play improvements such as jump buffering, coyote time, variable jump height, peak gravity attenuation and so forth. Those techniques are incredible for good platforming and I will probably need another video for the whole explanation of them. I'm leaving a cool video about all of those techniques in the description in case you want to know more. Those were implemented in Unity but could be translated to any engine like I did. I spent the rest of my day putting levels together and improving bits and pieces on game feel. And just like that, the day was over. I was starting to feel pressured on time. I decided it was time to finish the game so I could leave the last hours of the gym for tweaks if needed. I added some UI for coin collecting and also added another pickup, the golden fly. Those are hidden throughout the game. I challenge you to find them. I added some more touches such as death animations, screen transitions and also made a ton of levels. Okay, so um, I know some of those levels look hard because they are. I really love challenging games and when designing levels I make them hard automatically. I ended up making it a lot easier based on our team feedback. Other than this game, I'm also working on a small roguelite game in my free time. It tells the story of a small mushroom that fights hordes of insects controlled by the evil Cordyceps. I am halfway through releasing a demo, so if you're interested, would you consider subscribing? I plan to release videos about it when the time is right, and it would also help a ton. Thanks, now back to the video. It was at that time that I received all of our final art, and I started replacing placeholders immediately. My favorite piece of art is probably the witch UI playing the piano. I also made a final cutscene, which looks amazing by the way, but I want to be showing it as a reward for those who complete the game. I was really determined to finish the game that night and only polish some things in the next morning. So by the time I finished working, it was already very late. It was all really worth it though. Our game was basically ready, but I still needed to make some adjustments. I started the last day by making our main menu and our game's UI. I playtested it a ton and took some time to fix some bugs. I had to be sure people could play our game from start to finish. I also polished the tutorial section, made some special props that change colors with the beats and also added controller support until I finally sent a working build to each.io with one hour left on the clock. It was finally over and we were very proud of what we made. Five days have passed, five days of playing, 
voting on other people's games and also resting a bit. The results of the jam were finally here. The jam had a total of 9,592 entries. I think we did pretty good, but there were also some bad points. First of all, our artists and our musician did a really good job. Our points in artwork and audio are their merit, and they deserve it. As for enjoyment, we got a ton of comments about all sorts of things. Almost all of our comments were positive, but we also got some bad ones. First of all, apparently the game was really hard. This was my bad since I actually thought the game was too easy and made a few challenging parts here and there. It was nothing out of the ordinary, but people playing our game for the jam would get frustrated since they only wanted to beat games as fast as possible so they can get to play more games. I could tone down the difficulty even more, but the solution I like the most is to make the game hard by design. This could be done, for example, by putting a death counter on the game and transforming it into a challenge instead. This is what I did after the gym was over. Another problem we had was with our keybinds. I implemented an arrow control scheme with space to jump and C to dash. On some devices, however, it was causing a problem called keyboard ghosting, which is basically when people press multiple buttons on the keyboard and it does not respond. This can be fixed by using keybinds that are specially made to be pressed together with other keys, such as Shift and Control. Also, a ton of people complained about the lack of WASD controls. One comment I really liked was one from a person called King Midis, which took some time and drew why our control scheme was bad with this really funny drawing. Unironically, he made me understand that people use their keyboard in really funny ways. I fixed those keyboard issues after the jam and I hope it makes for a better experience. As for narrative, our story is simple and explain it one screen before the start of the game, but I can see that people did not go there usually. Also, the high point of our story was the ending, which few people got to see since the game was apparently too hard. Lastly, creativity. This was our worst score. It seems people are really tired of pixel platformers and they did not think our mechanic was creative enough. I had a ton of fun in this jam. This taught me way more than I had imagined. I'm really happy and proud we made something from start to finish. We made a polished, fun and challenging experience that some people really enjoyed. This fills my heart with joy, even if you're not making a penny out of it. I also learned that jammers are really hard to please, but also that not everyone needs to be pleased. For my main game, I want to make a really challenging experience with a that's how it is meant to be played thought in mind, even if not everyone likes it. I want to put my heart, soul and personality in it, and hopefully make someone celebrate in victory after a level, but that's for another video. If you want to play our game, you can do so by using the link in the description. I really hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.